I'd say we got about all the kingdom we can carry, Billy. Yep, I'd say so. And besides, it's getting on to dusk, so we better start heading back. That's okay by me, boss. Because, uh, actually, it's, uh, getting us a little scary now. Look. There. Who is it, Bob? Can't tell, Billy. I never seen him. You ever seen him? Nope. Never. Is he a spook, Bob? Don't know. But looks like he's heading for the village. And we better get there first. Come on. I know a shortcut. Rankin Bass present Festival of Family Classics. A winsome tale about the legendary American apple grower, Johnny Appleseed. So bring on the whole family. All right now, who else? Who else is going to step right up here and lay down one little bitty silver dollar for a priceless that's right, I said priceless bottle of Dr. Staywell Super Health Tonic. The cheapest and the best little insurance policy you can buy against the cold and the misery. That's right, I said the certain misery of the fast approaching winter. Who else? You, sir. Okay, sounds good to me. Now, there's a gentleman of sound judgment. A gentleman who'll be padding through the winter in the pink of hell. Excuse me, Doc. But there's something strange just happened in the woods. So while Billy and me was out there gathering wood just now, we saw someone might be spooky. What did they look like? He was wearing coffee sacks, and he had a, a cooking pot in his head, yeah, and there was a raccoon squatting on top of the pot, and two little birds perching on the pot handle. And he was putting a lot of little things into the ground as he walked. Bob, I think you've been spending too much time in the woods. No, it's the truth. Bob and me saw him. I think the whole thing's crazy as crows in a corn shed. Wait! Look what's coming! Howdy, everyone. Uh, hello there. Uh, who are you? I ain't nobody to be afeard of, so rest easy. I'm John Chapman, but kid folks and big folks and sometimes even animal folks been calling me Johnny Appleseed since I can't recollect. John Appleseed, I've heard that name. I have too. Reckon that's because I've been through these parts before, about two orchards ago. Orchards? Yes, sir. Apple orchards. You mean them two orchards out by the creek? That's them. You seeded them orchards? Right out of this trusty old sack. So, we wasn't the first folks in Indiana after all. I've been moving west ahead of frontier folk for 25 years. Just planting orchards? In my life's work. Well, you're welcome here, John Appleseed. Yes, yes you are. Right. Right. Much obliged. I hope my little friends here are welcome, too. Little friends, too? Allow me to introduce you. This here's Chipper. Do your pleasantries. <laughs> These two lovebirds is named Mac and Tosh. Uh, <clears throat> Mac and Tosh. Where are the Greek manners I taught you? And up there is Bushy, my trusty raccoon. Well, what are you supposed to do now? Can I pet him? Sure can. What's your name? Billy Crowley. You want apple, Billy? Sure would. You eat apples much? Not too much. Should. Apple a day keeps the doctor away. What was that? You say uh, an apple a day keeps the doctor away? That's right. <laughs> well, <laughs> that sure is a new one. Plum crazy one, too, if you ask me. True as a deer's track. 
And I got enough apples in the sack here to go around at least once. No, thanks, Johnny. About to eat dinner. Winter's coming. Gonna be a cold one. They're gonna be all ready for it, too. We're getting ready, all right. Got just one more house to finish patching. And besides that, we got plenty of health tonic from Doc Staywell here. Health tonic? That's right, from the good Doc here. Uh-huh, I see. Well, bet you could use some help finishing up on that house. Sure could. Johnny, you're a saint to be helping with all this work. Johnny, you'll be sharing our lunch now, you hear? Thanks, Mr. Tatham. But I got the best lunch a man could eat right in this spot. <laughs> Johnny, you sure put a heap of stock in them silly apples. <laughs> but apples is dang near all a man needs in his belly. You see, apples is brimming over with terrific health-giving virtues. That's why apples is what's prescribed for us all by Dr. Nature. Dr. <laughs> Nature? <laughs> That's Mother Nature's oldest son. He went straight into medicine. And I tell you something else. You see, apples can even give you muscles. Ones like you never dreamed of. Apples got a good flavor, Johnny. There's no denying that. And they're said to put a pupil on the sweet side of a schoolmarm. But other than that, ain't an apple's just an apple. No, sir, Ree. The plain truth is, apples is medicine. Pure, natural, preventive medicine. Johnny, you're a real nice fella. But your ideas is beginning to lean pretty far to the loony side. Besides, like we said before, we get all the medicine we need from Doc Staywell. <laughs> well, back to work. We'd like some of your apples, Johnny. Okay. I'll trade you some apples for what you know about this Doc Staywell. It's a deal. Right after work. Doc Staywell is this a funny talking doctor who came here in a wagon just a few days ago. You ever seen inside his wagon, Billy? No. You, Jenny? Uh-uh. Rich? They neither. Well, I think we should have ourselves a look. Do you think your folks got any notion of how he makes that health tonic? Or what he puts in it? I don't think so. Mine neither. If you ask me, they're buying it mostly on account of them fancy bottles and labels. And that fancy name. Yeah, if you ask me too. What about apples, Johnny? Are they really good medicine like you were telling the elders? There's this little secret about apples, see? A secret that's chock full of the wisdom of Mother Nature herself. You eat just one big red ripe apple each day between now and December, just one, and you'll be healthy as a hummingbird all this coming winter. And that's the honest truth. Okay, Johnny. I'll try it. Me too. Me too. Wish your folks was that easy to persuade. We gotta figure a way to convince them now and get them out of Staywell's clutches. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't we make our own health medicine out of Johnny's apples? And we'll put it up in fancy bottles with fancy labels, and we can make up our own fancy name. Right. And our folks will like it better in Doc Staywell's, because it'll taste so much better. That's it, all right. A terrific plan. Well, if it ain't the very freckled faces of the frontier's future. Hold on a minute there, junior folk. That's good. Now. Since the future depends on you, and you gotta therefore stay in the pink of health, you will be delighted. That's right, I said delighted to know that I just happen to have left here a few precious bottles of my super health tonic for children. No thanks, we're making our own medicine. It comes from nature. And besides, we got our own private doctor. He's our best friend too. Yeah. 
sell any, Johnny? Not gonna sell it, Billy. Gonna give it away. Keep them labels coming, Jenny. Yes, sir, Johnny. Boy, if it's free, they should really go for it big. Hope so. Especially in these fancy bottles and labels. I figure that's what's gonna do it. Almost done with the side, Johnny. Good work, Rich. What's gonna happen if they don't want any, Johnny? We'll be drinking apple juice till we all grow stems. That's right, folks. So now you can get right here as many free, that's right, I said absolutely free bottles of Dr. Appleseed's great taste and winter comfort apple medicine as you can carry back home. Notice this bottle, folks. Notice this label. Notice this name. Why, as you can plainly see, this is an impressive product. One that looks like it'll do the job, sure enough. Didn't know you were a doctor, Johnny. He's no doctor. Neither is your friend Staywell. Sure gotta give you A for effort, Johnny. Just wishing I could give you A for apples. Johnny, apples taste just too good to be medicine. Medicine always tastes real bad. And we got our medicine, Johnny. And we're set for the winter. Sorry I can't stay longer, Johnny. Gotta get back to the store. See you later, Johnny. What are we gonna do, Johnny? Start drinking, I guess. But what about the grown-ups when winter comes? I'm worried about them, Johnny. So am I, Jenny. We'll just have to figure something else. And in the meantime, we better keep our fingers crossed that it don't turn cold early. <laughs> well, well. If this ain't a touching little scene of moping and misery. Well, if it ain't the good doctor. You mean the bad doctor, don't you? reckon that's a good deal more like it. And I reckon that as doctors go, if I'm bad, and you must be something for which there ain't no word yet in our fine English language, Dr. Appleseed. Well, now, if you're going by what's on that sign there, you ought to know I called myself doctor for a good reason. Yeah? And what might that be? To show the town folk here how easily a man can come by his credentials. My credentials is my business, Mr. Appleseed. And I say it's just as much their business, since they're buying that wagon grease that you're selling. Well, now, I gotta rest my case on the following fact, Mr. Appleseed. These here intelligent townsfolk, possessing a free will, have chosen to lay down their hard-earned money for my product in a clearly demonstrated preference to acquiring yours for nothing. Now, I'll rest my case, Mr. Staywell. Dr. Staywell, if you please. I'll rest my case on what happens this winter, because that's when we're going to find out whose product delivers the goods. This winter it is. And Doc, if it ain't your product that prevails, I wouldn't waste no time getting out of town if I was you. <laughs> Getting a little chilly. Who won the argument, Johnny? You or Doc Staywell? Don't make no difference, not if the town folk lose. What should we do, Johnny? I'll tell you what you kids are gonna do. You're gonna go on home now. But what about the elders? You giving up? Nothing more Johnny can do. That's right. Just gotta hope. Hope real hard. Now, each of you take home as much of this apple juice as you can carry, you hear? What are you gonna do, Johnny? I'm going to store the rest of this stuff in that big tree trunk over there. And then I'm going to move on to check on some orchards west of here. Be back inside a month. We'll miss you, John. And I'll miss you, too. Now, run along, and, and I'll be seeing you. Chipper, Bushy, give me a paw putting this stuff into the tree, will you? Hi, Johnny. Hi, little friends. How be you? We're fine. So, you've been drinking plenty of apple juice. Yup. Lucky thing, because winter's come early, like I figured. Say, this town's quiet as an old hollow tree. Looks just as empty. What's happened, Billy? Well, everyone's here, but they're all sick. All the grown-ups, just like you figured. Well, now, that's mighty interesting. Johnny, it's the dangest thing. We've been taking Staywell's medicine, but the whole town's under the weather. Except the kids. And there's work needs doing, piling up like crazy. I'll be organizing the kids into work details, Mr. Crowley. We'll get it done. Say, Johnny, how come you're so disgustingly healthy? Same reason the kids are. 
Could it be that apple tonic? Couldn't be. Hi, Edgar. Johnny's back in town, healthy as a hornet. He's gonna organize the kids, help get the work done. Johnny healthy, huh? Could it be that apple tonic? Could be. Hold on, hold on now. Let's get some order here. Let's hear from you one at a time. <laughs> That's not exactly what I meant. Edgar, let's look at facts. We've all been guzzling that stay well tonic every day for a near month and a half. All the ones who's been taking it are sick, right to a man. And all those who haven't been taking it are healthy, which consists exactly of the kids and John Appleseed. Who also happen to have been drinking a quart of apple juice every day. Right, so logic says we better start reconsidering Johnny's ideas and his tonic. I say let's go find him right now. Tell you who I'd like to find is Doc Staywell. That's the second order of business, all right. First, Johnny. Hi, everybody. You feeling better? A little better. Up on our feet now, anyway. Johnny, we've been doing some thinking and talking. And we figure it's got to be that apple tonic of yours that's turned the trick for you and the kids. Johnny, if you're still willing, we'd like to buy us all a good big supply. You got it nearby, Johnny? Not far. I'll go get it. Can we give you a hand? No, thanks. Come on, kids. It's not here. The stuff's plumb gone. What? This tree's empty as a honey jar in a bear's house. This here tree had a little visit from Staywell, I'll wager. Sure, that's it. Yeah, it's got to be Staywell. Well, only one thing we can do. Hunt for Staywell? Yeah, and get our tonic back. Right you are. But it's getting dark, so we'll head back to the village now and start out first thing in the morning. Now, just what are you four up to, anyhow? Johnny, then we can split up as soon as we reach the woods. Okay. Look, it's Staywell's wagon. But no Staywell. Look, Johnny's lovebirds is leading the horses. So that's what them rascals was up to. Well, I'll be. Good work, little friends. Johnny, all your tonics here, all right? Doc's put it up in his own bottles and labels. Figured he would. But where's the Doc? That's the next question. Look, here he comes now, being led by more of your little friends. Them animals and birds of yours are some deputies, John. Well, Doc, winter came and your product didn't do so good, did it? Nope. And I'm sorry about the stealing, too. I truly am. I say lock him up. I say spring him up. Now, let's not get all crazy here. Well, how about getting our money back, at least? I got all your money. Found it in the wagon. Uh, what do you think we should do, Johnny? Well, sir, I think the doc has become a true convert to apples. 
And I think if we let him go with my apple seeds and my apple tonic recipe, that he'll go west, planting seeds as he goes, growing lots of orchards, and just generally keeping people healthy and apple-cheeked all the way to California. But what about you, Johnny? Planting's your business. Oh, there's more land than I can handle alone. And I'd be mighty happy to have a Western Territory manager. Well, it makes good sense to me. What do you say, Doc? I say I'd be mighty happy to accept the job. Well, then be on your way. Okay. Seeds are in there, Doc. So's the recipe. And Doc, good planting. Oh, yeah. And be sure you lay them seeds down in soft soil about mid-spring. But listen, don't worry none about watering. Nature will take care of that. And don't plant them all in one place, you hear? There's a lot of earth between here and California. Oh, and Doc, one more thing. Thanks. What are you going to do now, Johnny? I'm going to head back east. Check on some old orchards and some old friends, too. We're sorry to see you go, John. Yeah. Y'all help yourselves now to that apple tonic there. You bet we will. And John, thanks to you for everything. Yeah. I enjoyed knowing every one of you. But I hope I pass this way again. We sure hope you do, too, John. Good luck now. Don't forget, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> 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 <laughs>